This particular video will be dedicated to the solution of this circuit, which has two batteries apparently opposing each other. I'm planning to use Kirchhoff's loop rule and Kirchhoff's junction rule. So first I'll start with the junction rule. It's not as much fun, so I'm saving primrose for the loop rule, but the junction rule involves this junction right here and this junction right there, because those are the places that three or more wires meet. Obviously, a single junction where two wires meet is asinine because you've got current going in and current going out. I mean, in principle, I could define any of these as junctions and they're really, really trivial. So, let's define this location here as A and this location here as B, and we will say that the junctions work like this junctions say A gives us, junction A gives us that, oh, I've got to define all these currents, right? So I'm going to say this is current one going that direction, and then I'm going to call this through here current two going that direction, so current two is here as well, and then this guy, this is a separate current, so I'm going to call that current three. This current over here, what's this guy going through here? That current is I1 again. All right, so we've got current two, current three, and current one over in this leg, and they could, uh, of course, be very different from one another. So junction A has current one going in and current two and three going out. So I write current one minus current two minus current three equals zero. And then at junction B, I notice that current one and two are going in, but current, uh, sorry, current two and three are going in and current one is coming out. So I say, well, I say I2 plus I3 minus I1 equals zero. Notice that this equation right here is that equation multiplied by negative one. All right, so that's redundant and I can just sort of cross it out. Mm-hmm, it is completely captured by the first junction. Now I have to define some loops, and I promised Primrose, and here it is. My first loop is going to be here. I have to define the direction of my loop also. My loop goes this direction, and I'll call that loop 1, and I'll circle it. And my second loop is planning to be in here. This guy is what I'm going to name loop two. And then you know where my third loop's going to be. My third loop is planning on being around the entire outside. That is my loop three. So here are my loop equations. Loop one says I'm going through, I'm going to start from here. Again, I, I like to just define something to be zero volts. I'll just call that zero volts. And the loop equation says if I go around a loop and I get back to zero volts, I've got to get back to zero volts. Or if I'm starting from over here, like I have to start at junction B for loop two, I'm going to get back to whatever that voltage is, but I'm going to get back to that value by gum because energy is conserved. So for loop one, I find that I get 12 volts addition because I'm going through that battery that direction. And then as I continue in this loop, I've got an equipotential here as I've got a conductor, and then I drop my voltage because I'm going through a resistor in the proper direction. Notice that current three is pointing that direction, and I'm dropping my voltage, assuming that I've defined these uh, currents correctly, but guess what? I didn't, so that's gonna be a fun surprise. But assuming I'm going that direction, my voltage will drop. So I have to subtract the voltage drop on this resistor, which is, oh, I'm just going to call them R because they're all the same. We can plug in for that later. It's going to be I3 times R. And then as I continue this direction, I'm going through this resistor in the direction of the current, so I'm dropping my, my voltage again, and that's going to be I1 times R. All that stuff has to equal zero in loop two. I start from this point and I say I'm going through that resistor opposite the direction of the current. So I actually get a voltage increase. According to my statement, I'm going to have to get I3 times R, and it's positive because I'm going the wrong way through the resistor. So it's not a voltage drop, it's a voltage rise. Here, I'm also going the wrong way through that battery. So I'm going to subtract 15 volts. Weird. Weird. Okay, so maybe I made some of these definitions wrong, but that's okay. I'm just going to get minus signs in my variables. I'll still be able to tell you what the current is and which way it's going. So then as I continue through this resistor, thankfully I'm finally going the proper direction. I'm going to have a, uh, a voltage 
raw, oh, oh, a voltage drop. No, I'll have a voltage drop right here through that resistor. So that's going to be minus I2 times ARA equals zero. And then I'm going to get loop three going right here. Loop three starts here and goes all the way around the outside of the circuit. I get 12 volts, and then I'm going through this battery the wrong direction, so I subtract 15 volts, and then I'm going through this resistor as a voltage drop in the direction of the current, so I subtract I2 times ARA, and my final resistor I need to go through is going to subtract I1 times ARA. I'd like you to notice something. This is equal to zero. <clears throat> I'm going to draw a line right here. And I want to point out what's going on. If you take this equation and add this equation, you actually get this equation right here. So again, we have a redundant equation. This one plus this one, check it out. We got a 12 volts, we got a negative 15 volts, we got an I3R minus and an I3R plus, so those guys don't appear. And then I'm subtracting I1R, boom, right there, and I2R right there. So this, again, is a redundant equation, and you find this a lot with Kirchhoff's rules. They are beautiful, but you have to be careful because sometimes you get too much information and it is simply a waste of your time. As you get more experience with them, you'll find that they can be really efficient if you know where to look for these redundancies. So I'm going to take these equations, and I'm going to do a bunch of equation analysis that's not really physics, it's simply math, and I'm going to do it in a kind of clunky, straightforward way, nothing elegant, and then we'll come back and we'll be able to say what all these currents are. I'm not going to solve for them, but we'll find that some of them are negative in a really explicit way. So let's take these equations. We have only three equations, and my intention is to solve this one for I3. And I'll, well, maybe you'll see why. Anyway, this is I3, it's got to be I1 minus I2. And my next plan is to get this guy solved for I1. <clears throat> so that says that I1 equals, well, it's going to be 12 volts minus I3 times ARA divided by ARA, right? Okay, and then if I solve this guy for I2, I2 will be I3 times ARA minus 15 volts, the whole thing divided by ARA. Naturally, we did this so that we could plug into the above equation. Take these guys into there, and you'll see that we actually have an I3 that we can solve on its own. We find I3 equals, <clears throat> oh man, well the whole thing's divided by R, so that's nice. I'm going to write it like this. How should I write it? Nah, I'll just write it like this. I got 12 volts divided by R minus I3. And then I have to continue going this way, except I'm going to subtract, and that says minus I3, and then I add plus 15 volts divided by R. Now, if you look at all this mess right here, it looks like I've got two I3s over there, so I could make, uh, what am I gonna do? I'm going to add two I3s to both sides, so I say that three I3 is, oh my goodness, this is way too much detail. How many, 27 volts divided by R? And then uh, if you want I3, it's really just nine volts over R. Okay, beautiful. Then you can take this and you can plug it back into, where do you wanna go? You got a, um, you've got your I3 now, so you can go to this equation and solve for I1, and you can go to this equation and solve for I2. Then you'll know all the currents. But what we did just find is that the current is going this direction because I3 is a positive number, assuming I didn't make a mistake with these guys right here. Boy, I hope I didn't. No, I think it's pretty solid. Okay, so the rest of it is purely algebra, but when you go back here, you get to find that some of these currents are not going the direction that you expected them. In particular, I'm gonna find that I2 is this direction, so that will appear in my equation as a minus sign. Good luck, practice this a lot.